We are back, guys. Welcome back to another Thursday, another trip to the thrift. I can't wait to get stuck into this one. I'm going to go to my usual five or six op shops, and hopefully this week we're going to find some absolute gold. If you're here for the very first time, I do these reselling videos three times a week, but I've got to say, Thursday is my favorite. I get out in the field, I go and find some absolute treasure, and I show you what I find along the way. So if you're in a reselling by any means, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like. I've got a really good feeling about today. We're going to find some good stuff. So let's get straight into it. I'm not mucking around. I'm going to find some awesome items. I'm going to show you what they are and I'm going to show you what we can resell it for. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Okay, guys, we jumped the gun a little bit because it's 8.55 and the op shop, first one of the day, it's actually closed. So we've got about five minutes to kill here. I did just want to really quickly mention to you something that I wanted to speak of today. So it's actually quite good that this place is closed. Um, I wanted to speak about upselling on Facebook Marketplace. Just yesterday, I sold a pair of Tommy Hilfiger jeans for $40, but I had a couple of polos upstairs in the Tommy Hilfiger brand. So I said to him, would you be interested in potentially grabbing a couple of polo shirts, um, Tommy Hilfiger's? I'll do them for $20. Now I know that I can sell them for about 30 or 35 on eBay, but there were no fees. He's already buying a $40 pair of jeans off me, so I was happy to do a $20 deal with him if he wanted to take the item. Now, I only paid $4 for these Tommy Hilfiger polos, and when I brought them all out, I wasn't even sure if he was even going to fit or if they were even going to be in the colors that he was interested in but he ended up buying one polo for twenty dollars so i've turned a forty dollar pair of jeans into a sixty dollar sale for two items and collectively i paid nine dollars for the two items initially so facebook marketplace upselling it's not something i've done a whole lot of but i think for every transaction now as soon as somebody comes to the house I'm just gonna say, what else do you want? And hopefully try and double my sales results. So might be a good little hint, tip or trick there for you guys to start doing is just think about what is that person coming to the house to buy? And what do I have that they also might be interested in? Um, you might see your sales number spike, but this one's opening up. Let's get into it. First shop op shot of the day. Looking forward to it. Come on. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. That's the way. Firstly, big shout out to Liz at this op shop. I, I've said it in a few videos in, in the past, you really want to kind of make good friends with the people that work in the op shops because they can often help you out. Um, I've got this lady in here, Liz, the first op shop. I always go into this one and she only works one day a week. The thing with the op shop guys is they always are casuals and they only work a few times. So she comes in every Thursday. I just seem to come in every Thursday as well. And we've struck up a bit of a friendship. And look, it might not seem like a lot, but she helped me out today with my loyalty card. She's basically giving me an extra stamp for $20 worth of value. Um, she didn't have to do it just because I see her every week and we have a, a good conversation each time. You know, she looks after me. so. I think that's a really good way to go about trying to maybe help your buying situation and maybe, you know, you might get some discounts. You might not, but I always think that just being a good person, having a good chat with the people that work in the op shops are, are just a good way to go about it. So thank you very much to Liz. I've been able to score an extra $20 credit towards my next $20 off with discount. I actually got a $20 discount today, guys. So I've bought um, what was a total cost of $54, but in the end, I've just paid $34. So 34 bucks for everything that I bought here today, which a lot of it you would have seen in that footage just then, but um, it's come out to a pretty good cost per, per item. So this one was a Kathmandu. I had to get the Kathmandu because it's just obviously a premium brand. Um, so this one was just a sort of a long sleeve women's sweater. Um, it's only a size small, but it's just a really nice material. It's a good brand. It should sell for a few more dollars than five. So I grabbed that one. Uh, I grabbed this Oakley polo shirt. I just love grabbing polos because they do just seem to really quickly sell. Um, this one's in really good condition. The Oakley brand is a great brand to obviously get your hands on if you can. Um, I'll have to work out what the average cost per good was, but I, I think we're talking about three or four dollars now for each item that I'm showing you. Um, so the, the loyalty cards certainly do pay off if you do get your hands on them. Um, this one here was a Nike uh, dry fit t-shirt. 
These sell very, very fast on eBay. I'll do this for about $19, $20, buy it now. Um, again, would have paid three or four dollars for this one. Just sort of a plain essential, but that dry fit there, um, that's always the, sort of the best Nike gear to get. Uh, look, I did end up paying $10 for this polo, but obviously the loyalty card does help things, but it's RM Williams, and you're always gonna do well when you buy RM Williams. So this one was an XL, which is a great size to get your hands on. It's got the small logo there, as you can see. It's a double stitch, really stoked to find this one. This one will go very, very quick, because people do search for RM Williams quite a lot on eBay. Um, very high traffic with that brand. Um, I found some Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, so this is a great brand to get your hands on if you can. Abercrombie. Um, so these are a couple of just really plain essential shorts. Nothing really, you know, too crazy to it. But I would have only paid three or four dollars for those. And that brand, that sort of plain essential short, especially here in the summertime in Australia, it's a great one to get. So no board shorts today in this op shop. It was just more about the casual sort of, um, you know, chino type shorts. Um, this one as well, another pair, just a really plain, really nice, no damage or whatever to it. Um, it's got the industry brand, so I try and get industry wherever I can. I speak about industry quite a bit because it's just a really, I guess a really quality brand. Um, again, really just plain, but this one will sell for maybe $15, $20 on eBay. Um, now, there, you would have seen a few board games that I was going through as well, and unfortunately that CSI board game didn't actually comp very well on eBay, so I kind of had to let that one go. I was a bit disappointed because I thought I'd come across a good one. Um, but this one here, National Geographic. So I, I just assume that National Geographic, and as you can see there, it's got a pretty funky 3D um, design to this sort of a puzzle. This one's just a, a 1000 piece puzzle set. It's the New York skyline, you know, 3D. Um, so there's a little bit, you know, of uniqueness about it, which I kind of liked. National Geographic, obviously a great brand. Um, this one was only $4 and it was comping around the 25 to $30 mark on eBay. So. Yeah, I, I don't really get too many puzzles, but this one with the National Geographic brand, I thought maybe maybe I could make a few. And then this one was probably the best of the bunch. This was the um, Tip of Your Tongue, Tip of Your Tongue board game. So this one comp very well. This is the Nova version of Tip of Your Tongue. This one was a 2008 board game and I did my comps on it and the comps are, are pretty good. So I'm gonna make about 30 bucks, I would imagine, on this board game. It's got all the pieces, it's a complete set. Keep an eye out for the board games, guys, because you never know what you can find. It's always good to pay attention to those. Um, the toys as well. Couldn't really come across any toys that were of really great value. I saw that Bob the Builder toy and I, I thought about grabbing that, but in the end, I just passed. It's just been clothing. I had a look on the, the back of the op shop as well, because you know, in the, in the back of the op shop behind the cash register is where they always house the really valuable items. I found a $200 board game behind the counter last week in this op shop. Today, no luck. But look, it just pays to check because you never know what you can find. Um, so look guys, a couple of essentials really, just some shirts and, and shorts and a couple of puzzles and a vinyl record for the first op shop. You don't always come away with items in an op shop. So, you know, to grab my hands on eight of them, I pay $34 for all of it. We've got nine items. So we're basically paying about $3.70 per item because I had that $20 discount. So grab your discount cards, get friendly with the staff, pick out all your items and you'll save yourself some money. So let's get into the second op shop. Not too bad so far, but hopefully we can find some more gold in the next one. So let's keep moving. <laughs> Awesome. 
second op shop of the day. I couldn't believe it when I walked in and I saw all those shoes in just one rack. Um, so I'll take you through those to kick off. I found these ASICs. Now these are a size 13, which I actually don't mind finding the larger pair of shoes because there's obviously people out there that still need the big foot. And uh, if you do have them, I think the um, supply of them out there is a little bit less than what they are for the sort of your standard size. So to get them, um, I reckon I'll get them for about 35, 40. They are in very good condition. They are the Gel Lethal Club 8s. Uh, so I'll put the comps up here as I always do, but those should be a pretty good return. I also found the Lunar as well, the Lunar Clips 4, the Nike Lunar Clips 4s. Now, I've bought a few of these in the past and they do sell very well. People sort of look for this one and I reckon I'm going to get about 30 to 35 for these as well. So that was cool. Whenever you see Vans, guys, always grab them because they are just a really good quality shoe. A lot of people buy them. A lot of people know the brand. These are a US 7 men's, US 8.5 women's. They're like a metallic silver, sort of a glitter type look and I really like that. I don't think I've really seen too much of that in the past. So to find him sitting in the op shop and he was just eight bucks, I'm going to turn that into 35 or 40 when I put the gumption uh, straight into that white and make that really nice and bright. So a bit of cleaning, but that will be a 35 to $40 sale. Uh, I found the Air Maxes as well, guys. How cool is that? I really love finding the Air Max in a different sort of pattern. This pattern and this colorway was just speaking to me when I was in there. So they were pretty much in my basket straight away and they were only $10, but these were $10. But what I will say is the ladies really looked after me in the op shop because I'll go through the pricing with you in just a second, but I was shocked when I actually realized what I had to pay when I got to the checkout. So anyway, I bought those. Um, so that was four pairs of shoes that I ended up purchasing. Um, then I bought some clothing. Now I found these pair, I really loved your help actually. If you could leave it in the comments below. I found this pair of Ralph Lauren pants, but to me, they look like horse riding pants. And just let me know if they are. I'm basing horse riding based off just simply that. But they've also got this clip at the bottom here as well, which I've not really seen too much of before. So I'm thinking that they're horse riding women's pants. They're, they're a size 10. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some research, but I think I've come across We've got this little tag here. I don't know. They could be, yeah, they could be horse riding pants. Anyway, they were mine the minute I saw them. Um, I found this essential Nike polo shirt too. I don't mind buying the plain essential polos. I do sort of have an issue with buying small. I generally like to get medium, large, extra large, or even double XL. This is a small and it's just a plain white and black. I bought it because of the Nike tick. You've just got to get Nike whenever you see it. So I had to buy that. This one was a women's size large, pure motion, added as essential, um, sort of just training top. Um, it's got the little faded stripe in there and it's got the three tick down the bottom there too. Uh, sorry, the three stripe. Um, I found this Callaway Golf Polo as well. Now I sold this just yesterday on Facebook Marketplace for $25. So the minute I saw it again for just $5 in the op shop, it was gonna be mine pretty fast. So found that one. Now this is just a really cool, really nice material. Callaway Golf, if you're buying sort of anything in golf uh, apparel, Callaway is gonna be the brand that you wanna buy. So secured that one. And then I found another essential New Balance pair of shorts. Now these are just a plain black. It's got the little New Balance logo down the bottom there. They'll turn into about $15 on eBay pretty fast. Um, another essential pair of Adidas blue, uh, three stripe on the side. Uh, training shorts, again, probably $15. Don't mind buying the training shorts whenever I see them. This is a brand I talk about quite a bit as well. This is Rivka or RVCA. Again, a pretty plain pair of board shorts, but I reckon I can turn this into 15, maybe even $20 because we are heading into the summertime. So you wanna get your hands on the Rivka brand. Trust me, it sells very, very fast. These would retail for about $90, believe it or not. So got my hands on those. And then this was an awesome little find, guys. I was I was in the, uh, in the book area and I actually stumbled across this DVD set. Now this is a complete series of Boardwalk Empire. And if I put the comps up here for you to have a look at, there's been a few of these to sell for $100 on eBay. So look, I'm wrapped, absolutely stoked. That one was an awesome find. It says $5 here. I don't think I've paid quite five. I think it was about three or four in the end. Because what I will say, that it was everything that I bought. There were quite a few items in there. She's charged me 40 bucks for all of it. And she was pretty like lackadaisy, I guess, about the way she was sort of quoting up the price of things. Like I had all of my shoes there and she goes, oh, four pairs of shoes. She goes, 30 bucks. She didn't even look at the tags. Now, if you looked at the tags, these were $10. Um, the Lunar Eclipse were $9. That's already 19 for two pairs. So I think the shoes really should have been 40 and she's charged me 30. Um, and then all of the clothes, like I've bought probably eight pairs of clothes and she's charged me $10. So 
I've paid 40 bucks in the end and I picked up all of those items. And when you have a look at the first stop shop, I spent $34 on nine items. So all in all guys, for everything that you've seen today, I've spent just $74. So I'm gonna keep this ball rolling. I'm gonna try and get more items for a very low price. I'm gonna keep negotiating at the next stop shop, see what we can do. Um, if I can keep this to under $100 and get about 30 odd items today, this is gonna be a really, really good day because a lot of good brand names purchased and at a very, very low price. I'm really surprised as to how low it actually is. But anyway, we'll get off to op shop number three. Hopefully there's some more gold and some more treasure in there. Looking forward to jump, let's do it. $20 price tags on all those shoes. They were just, all of them would have sold really well. And look, you probably still could have made some money. I'd, I'd love to know in the comments as well, what's the most you'd pay for a pair of shoes in an op shop? Like there were some really good quality shoes in there, but for 20 bucks, I just had, to be honest, I've passed on them all. I haven't bought any of them today. I could go back and buy them tomorrow, but I don't know. I don't, I don't want to ever pay more than 10. That's sort of my max. I'll pay 15 if it's, you know, a $100 pair of shoes but $10 in an op shop is my personal maximum. Um, so 20 was just way too much. And I wasn't even gonna try and negotiate either because really across the board, this op shop that I was in was just horrendously overpriced in every category. You know, clothing was way too much, even, yeah, just all of it. Even the plush toys and the board games were a little bit more XC than what you find in the other op shops. Um, so I don't know if I'll go back to this one, but I did find a couple of items. Um, I found these, which I thought was pretty cool pair of Ralph Lauren thongs. So Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren polo uh, thongs, and I've paid $7 for those. So I've got no idea what they're gonna resell for. It's coming into the summertime here in Australia. So maybe 20 bucks, who knows? I don't know, but when you find Ralph Lauren, you always buy it, I guess. Um, I found a pair of women's tights, um, just short Nike Pro tights. Really nice little pattern and color to it as well. And they are in very good condition. So in the end, I've paid, these are a size large. I've paid, uh, I think it was about $8 for those. So if I can turn that into 15 to 20, it's a small win, but I'll take it. Like I said, it was very slim pickings in this op shop. And then industry guys, I buy a lot of the brand industry and I found another industry shirt. Um, so this is just a button up, very much just a plain essential type shirt, nothing really fancy to it, but it was only $3. So I bought it mainly because of just the brand alone. It was industry. So for $3, if you're buying industry, this is a size medium. Nice feel about it. It's a good make. The brand's good. Um, nice little pattern in it as well. So for three bucks, I couldn't say no to that. Um, but that was it, guys. I only spent about, I think, $18 in that op shop for three items. And when you have a look at the previous two op shops that I showed you, I spent everything was like $34 to, 50, uh, to $40. And then in this op shop, I've just bought three items and I've spent $18. So not really a sort of a great return out of that one there, but hopefully op shop number four uh, has some gold for us as well. So let's go to op shop number four. Fingers crossed there's a bit more in there than that last one, but that's okay. You're not gonna strike gold in every one you find.
Op shop number four, all wrapped up, guys. It wasn't too bad of a result in there. There were a couple of little goodies that I was able to find for a pretty cheap price. I think all up, I paid about $18 in this op shop, so uh, not, not too bad. And now, I found Bert's Family Feud. Who in Australia remembers Bert? Oh, Bert Newton, absolute legend, an Australian icon, really. Uh, Bert's Family Feud, this is very old school, but it is a DVD game, which is a little bit better than a board game, I guess. But uh, a DVD sitting in here, I had a look, the CD's in there, and there are some really good comps on eBay for about $30 to $35. So to find old Bertie in the op shop was a, a cool little find. Um, I found a pair of Quicksilver shorts as well, size 32. Now these are more of a casual short than a board short. So I think there's actually probably gonna be a couple more dollars in this one. I'm gonna try and go for 25 on eBay. Nothing fancy to it, very plain, but Quicksilver goes really well where I am here on the Gold Coast. Um, oh, I found these, these were awesome. These are a pair of Adidas shoes and they are all, I'm gonna market them as brand new, or well, not brand new, but like new, um, because there's just like, they've probably only been worn once. They're an awesome pair of shoes, these ones. Now they are the Canadia TR2s, the Canadia TR2s, um, Adidas, they should sell very well. I'm looking forward to seeing what the comps are telling you right there when I get into it this afternoon. But look, these have literally not been worn. I've paid $7 for these. I'm gonna try and get about 35 to 40. And then I bought the old Dojo, the old Dojo Adidas three stripes as well. So these really need a good clean. They are in no good a condition but they are still actually okay. The soles are pretty good as well. And when I saw that the soles were good, I saw that that was needing a clean, but then I saw the price tag and the price tag was $3. So for $3 guys, you buy based on price sometimes and I had to get that for three bucks. I'm gonna put as much gumption into this as I possibly can to try and get the dirt out. And then I'm gonna try and list them up for 20 bucks because they are out at us, they are in good condition. And if they can get back to being a nice bright white, I think they're gonna sell very well. So I grabbed them only because they were three dollars, a nice little cheap win to sort of end the day. Um, but that sort of wraps up everything that I've bought today. That was the last stop shop. I'm, I'm pretty happy with four because I've been able to get so many items out of the four. Um, all in all, I had a bit of a look at the receipts. Now guys, I've spent $108 for everything that you've seen today. So if you're new to thrifting and you've never been in the op shops, you don't really think there's too much value in there. I've bought all of these items today for just 108 bucks and the resale value, I can't only imagine what they're actually gonna work out to be once they're all eventually sold. So you really can, for a very small investment, make quite a big return. Op shops, I'm generally making about a 75 to 80% profit margin on everything that I'm buying. So look, it's a great space to get into if you're just doing it casually, if you're just thinking about getting into it, I highly recommend that you go into a couple of op shops, even just once a week, and just pick out one or two things that you would commonly personally buy yourself and try and get it at that, well, it will be, because you're in the op shop, it'll be at that sort of five, six, seven dollar mark, and then do your comp searching on eBay, and you're gonna get a really good return of maybe, the, you know, I generally average sort of 20 to 30 dollars. My average sale price is 45, but I play in furniture as well, so if you took the furniture out of it, I think my eBay sales for everything else outside of furniture would be about 30 dollars, and I'm sourcing everything for about five dollars, so, it's, I'm, I personally love doing it. it. You know, Thursdays are a really fun day for me because it's it's the large part of my sourcing throughout my week. I do source on other days because I am a full-time reseller. So I'm getting out maybe three to four times a week, but Thursday's the day I invest a lot of time into going to as many op shops as I can. And to come away today with a large haul like this, I'm gonna sit here for the next day and a half and I'm basically just gonna list it all before the weekend because I really, as, as a reseller myself, as a full-time reseller, I really try and get everything uploaded, everything put into the system. I know how much I've spent. It's all itemized out on the computer. And then I do my photos and my listing over the Friday. And then hopefully by Saturday, everything's sort of up on eBay, ready to be purchased. Um, that's sort of the way I like to do it. Uh, if I end up buying more items and I, I go to scale a, a bit more over time, um, I'm probably not gonna be able to hold up on, on the process that I'm going through at the moment. But at the moment, it's working really well for me. Um, I'm getting the continuous sales come through. So I can't really say that it's not working, so I'm gonna keep doing it as it is uh, for now. But um, yeah, I've gotta get back. I've gotta get back and I've gotta put it all into the computer. It does take some time. Uh, and then we're gonna do photos and listing all afternoon and into tomorrow. So big, big day. I hope you got a bit of a kick out of that, guys. I hope you've seen some brands that you maybe not have seen before that you can go out now and search for and hopefully find. But 
I've had a fun day. I hope you have too. I hope you always get some value out of these sort of videos. Let me know if you do. Let me know what sort of videos you would also want to see as well um, because I really want to put out the content that you want to be watching. Um, I've seen in the comments that a few of you have said, oh, I'd really like to do that, you know, that ride along style where we get in the car with you and, you know, we, you take us through the op shops. In the past, I've tried to take a few items back to the house and then just show you. And um, I know that you, you, know, you do prefer to me to, to do this style of video. So that's why I'm doing this again today. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know and uh, I'll catch you in the next episode, guys. But very, very much appreciate you tuning into this one. Bye for now.